Welcome to another Infinite Painter 6 tutorial. Today we will deal with gestures. For a mobile application, gestures are like keyboard shortcuts for a desktop computer. They speed up work dramatically. By a gesture I understand interaction with a touch screen without specific controls or hints being displayed. Painter takes full advantage of this input method. I count that there uh, are 30 or even 50 separate operations that you can perform with gestures, and at least 7 that cannot be performed without gestures. Ok, let's start with gestures that you can use any time when you see the canvas. Like navigation. These gestures are standard on touch control devices. Two finger drag, pinch and turn. Painter recently implemented two very useful shortcuts for undo and redo. Two finger tap for undo and three finger tap for redo. This seemed to become a standard on iOS and now come to Android as well. There are two sets of gestures for brush control. Three finger drag, vertically to adjust brush size horizontally to adjust opacity of the stroke. If I want to quickly hide all interface elements, I tap with four fingers. Besides that, there are two universal gestures that can be customized – double tap and long press. I have both of them set to fit screen, because the long press gives a very useful temporary zoom all option. When I lift my finger, it returns to the place where I worked before. This is extremely handy feature, currently in beta testing, but I'm sure it will be available in public version soon. You can also customize the function of your finger, if you use a stylus. These were gestures used on the canvas. Now let's take a look at the main toolbar. First, I can reposition the toolbar with long press and drag gesture and place it anywhere on the screen. Next, if I drag left-right on the size indicator, I adjust the brush size. Similarly, I can adjust opacity and the brightness of the color, current color. If in turn I drag out from the color indicator, I get the color picker or eyedropper tool. Super useful feature. If I tap on the color indicator, I open the color control window and if I drag the color wheel from here with two fingers, it turns into a permanent floater. This is the first hidden feature, you cannot do this without a gesture. I can drag the floater around with two fingers. In fact, I don't have to fit two fingers inside the floater, it's enough to place one finger inside and the other may be outside for convenience. Another useful feature is the docked color palette. You cannot open it with the gesture, however you will need gestures to customize it. If I add the color, it, it lands uh, at the top of the swatch list. But I can long press it and drag it down to desired position. Or I can drag it out to remove from the palette. Ok, now the layer panel. Again, I can move layers up and down within the stack by the same long press and drag gesture. If I drag to the left, I expand the panel. I can quickly delete a layer by dragging it out to the left. Be careful, there is no warning here. And one more gesture shortcut here. I can clip a layer by swiping to the right. To a clip, I repeat the gesture again. Painter has another very cool feature. If you use certain tools frequently, you can drag them to the top edge of the screen to create a custom toolbar. With the same long press gestures, you can rearrange or remove the shortcuts. This feature works on tablets only. In the transformations, in the free mode you can use standard two finger gestures to quickly resize or move your selection, but in the same time, you can use the same gestures outside the selection for navigation around canvas. There is also one more useful option here. You can move your selection around with one finger, or rather with your stylus, like, like me. 
I have set finger faction to move canvas so I cannot use my finger here. You don't have to drag inside the selection, just drag anywhere on the screen. This is very handy when you need more precision or you work with small selections. Ok, if you import a photo as a reference image, you can drag and resize it with two fingers. Here, like in the color wheel floater, you don't have to place two fingers inside the image. To remove the reference image from the list, you long press on the thumbnail. Ok, and now something more hidden. If you work with pers perspective grids, you may have discovered that in Painter certain geometric guides interact with the perspective. Probably the most useful one is the rectangle tool. But it is not obvious how to make the rectangle follow your design in the simulated 3D space. The trick is also gesture driven. The grid defines three planes and you can place the, your rectangle on each of the planes. The choice of the plane is done by dragging along the axis which is perpendicular in the virtual space to the chosen plane. What is not really intuitive, but when you get the idea it makes sense. But more useful, if you start in wrong direction, you can still return to the starting point and start over. Similar solution for the circles in perspective is under development. Ok, there are also a number of gestures hidden in filters. For example, for motion filters, you have to, you have to define center or direction of the effect by dragging on the screen. There's no visual indicator for this. In general, wherever there is a thumbnail list like here in pattern fill, long press on an item allows you to delete it. Ok, these were probably all the gestures used in the main editor of Infinite Painter. There are a few separate workspaces that also use specific gestures. This is for example the project gallery. If you want to select an item here, long press on it. Now we can delete the item or select more items and group them into a virtual folder. If you want to move an item, long press and drag first horizontally, then drag around where you wish to. And uh, when we are here, uh, if you start a new blank canvas, you can quickly change the size and proportions by dragging on the thumbnail. There are even more gesture-driven functions hidden deep in the application, but now you probably will figure them out yourself. I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something new today. Subscribe for more tutorials and consider supporting the project. Thanks for watching.